नमस्कार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फिलोसॉफी ऑफ मल्टीपल एस्पेक्ट्स और मल्टी एस्पेक्ट्स और व्हाट वी कॉल एस अनेकांतवाद दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ जैन फिलोसॉफी एंड इट हैज वाइड स्प्रेड एप्लीकेशन so we start with uh, a substance substances are characterized by infinite number of attributes uh, i told you this uh, in one of the last lecture also that a substance has infinite attributes you know and some of them may be contrary some are referred at one time and some are not so because there are infinite attributes it's not possible to refer to all of them at one time so only some are referred at any particular time and some are left out uh, an example uh, is given here a relationship to a person a person is son a father a brother a husband etc or a daughter is a mother a sister a wife etc and there is no contradiction in these uh, different statements meaning thereby that a person is a son and also father you know uh, on the outset it looks uh, contradictory but uh, there is no contradiction with respect to son a person is father and uh, with reference to father a person is son and that way uh, the the relationship is uh, explained so uh, this is a philosophy of multiple aspects you know so it's a method of thinking and analysis you know so how do you think and how do you analyze a situation or a given a given phenomena uh, is uh, based on the philosophy of multi aspects or multiple aspects this philosophy does not accept uh, an incomplete or partial view and avoids conflict between different views you know so this philosophy is just look here in order that you know a substance you have to look at it from all aspects you know and not only a few of them or only a, a few aspects you know. uh, then the uh, uh, if you do that it doesn't does not reveal the complete identity of the substance so uh, it is necessary that you know we have this kind of philosophy and this kind of view and the partial views are avoided this kind of thinking promotes open mindedness clarity and impartiality so that you know you are not partial to a substance you know its complete identity the interrelationship between different uh, modes of the same substance is basic to jain philosophy and you know modes occur one by one so the, they 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 are uh, time dependent you know but they are not present at the same time but the interrelationship between these modes is essential you know so although the modes are occurring at different times you must have you must keep in mind you know the relationship with the subject or object will have at a particular particular time or at a particular point in time in future with respect to its own particular nature so this is important uh, aspect a system therefore has a unique characteristics it cannot be solely determined by individual characteristic of its parts this is very important uh, if a system consists of parts you know we cannot say that we study the parts individually and therefore by summing up you know we know the we know about the system this is not a right view for example uh, you take the case of an organism you know so your organism is a combination of soul and body we know so if you study body without soul the uh, the body would be different then it is when it is combined with the soul 
So, you cannot say that I am studying the body and therefore, I know about the organism. No. If the soul is uh, present in the body, the body behaves in a particular manner and if the soul is not behaved in the body, the body behaves in a different manner, you know. So, uh, the behavior of one particular component is dependent on the behavior of the other component or presence of the other component. Take another example, you know. suppose a system consists of four components A, B, C, D and if I say that I study all the components A, B, C, D and by summing up I know the performance of the whole system, well this is not correct if the components are interrelated. So, if the components are interrelated, the system when it consists of A, B, C, D, the system behaves in a particular manner. If you take out one of the components, let us say D and now it consists of only A, B, C, now the system performance will be different. Even A, B, C will perform in a different manner in the absence of D, you know, as compared to what they were doing in presence of D. to further illustrate this point, you know, let us say there is a family, you take a societal system of a family and let us say the family consists of father, mother, daughter and son, A, B, C, D, four components, you know. So, the jointly the family has a certain kind of performance, you know, and uh, each one is performing in its own way, but dependent on the others. For example, the father behaves in a particular manner when all A, B, C, D are present. If one of them is taken out, for example, B is taken out, then the father A now behaves in a different manner and the system behaves in a different manner. So, the idea here is this that you know the system is uh, an interdependent whole, you know, it is not, you cannot separate out the components in order to study the system, you know. So, this is what is uh, emphasized here that the, uh, the system is a unique one, you know, and it cannot be solely determined by individual characteristic of its parts. Modern science has proceeded on a, dif in a, uh, on a different kind of assumption of reality. You know. The modern science, you know, starting from Descartes, uh, what is called as a scientific method has progressed under two related assumptions. Number one and two, a system could be broken down into its individual components, so that each component could be analyzed as an uh, uh, independent entity and the components could be added in a linear fashion to describe the totality of the system. So, here you know the in the scientific approach the basic assumption is that look like here if there are components A, B, C, D of a system, you study each component individually A, B, C, D separately and put them together and you know about the system you know. This is the approach the science is having. Biologist one uh, button left Patel and Fee in 1928 proposed that both assumptions were wrong, you know, these assumptions which I just now told you, he does not agree with this. On the contrary, in the general systems theory which he proposed, a system is characterized by the interactions of its components and non-linearity of those interactions, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. <coughs> so, this is what he says and this is what I just now described to you that the whole is a unique uh, system, you know, it is more than the sum of uh, uh, the component parts and this is the systems approach, you know, which is uh, very similar to what Jainism has been saying. Uh, the philosophy of multiple aspects can be seen easily uh, in conduct of human groups, as I told you, I just now gave an example of the family. Life is such that it fails to express itself in partial vision. 
it, it expresses in full vision you know and you see the system performance it's a very important principle of zen philosophy uh, which now finds parallel you know in the modern day system approach uh, and this has been existing uh, in jainism uh, for a long time so what we make a statement here now the universe is complex and comprises infinite realities this is the universe you know and the simultaneous view of totality is highly impossible for intellect you know so we our intellect has a very limited capacity you know it has a finite capacity so we are not able to comprehend the infinite realities simultaneously which exist in the universe so it is always a partial view or relative view with reference to beliefs prejudices mood and purpose of the speaker you know so we always get a partial view of the total reality and for that reason you know different uh, people will had a different view of the total reality and some of them may be contrary or contradictory and there will be difference of opinion in order to overcome this kind of difficulty you know jenis again proposed a different principle called as particular point of view this is the doctrine of particular point of view or what we call as nayavad in jainism this is another important doctrine a constituent of jain logic is the doctrine of nay that is uh, the particular point of view Uh, which enables to apprehend apprehend an object from a particular aspect at a time and also enables us to gain insight in the complex nature of reality as i told you the complex nature of reality is such that we cannot comprehend whole of it at a time so we do it in parts this is naiva the you know, particular point of view and then we 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 try to have the view of the totality so according to the jain doctrine the knowledge gained from sensuous consciousness is partial this is our limitation because we use our senses to comprehend the reality and because the senses have a limited approach or limited capability therefore our uh, view is always uh, partial and non complete knowledge of a substance so we are not able to gain the total knowledge of a substance because of the limitations of our senses that's very important you know and that partial knowledge becomes the subject of controversy as i told you different people can have different kinds of view of the same reality so there are five different aspects and there are five different individuals so the each individual will give have a different view of the reality and uh, the, the, the difficulty is that that each one of them will think that his knowledge is perfect you know although it is partial is thinking that no no i am perfect my knowledge is perfect i know everything and uh, that others to be untrue you know is so what i know is true and what you are telling is not true this kind of controversy comes up in uh, this approach you know uh, a exam- well known example is given here there are seven blind persons and elephant you know and uh, they examine the elephant you know so four say elephant is like a pillar because they touch their the feet of the ele- elephant fifth says it is like a broomstick one who touches the tail sixth says it is like a winnowing pen the one who touches the ears and seventh says it is a wall the one who touches the body now each one is correct partially there is uh, nothing wrong in what they are saying but at the same time we know that they are not describing the complete elephant you know each one of them only knows the part of element elephant so each one is examining the elephant from a particular point of view this is nayavad in jain philosophy an effort has been made to change this approach 
and understand truth through right vision what is called as naivad you know so we examine uh, the parts and try to arrive at the complete view now we make a statement here for naivad or for the particular standpoint non absolutistic or particular standpoint or viewpoint or way of approach and observation cognizes a single attribute of an object possessed of infinite attributes you know so only one single object attribute is examined at a time a view point expressing the intentions intention of the speaker or the knower which takes cognizance of a particular or intended aspect of the object apprehended through valid organ of knowledge uh, is a term pramana used which i'll talk to you in the later in this part of lecture and which does not repudiate the other aspects of the reality although he examines one aspect of a reality but he is not uh, ignoring or saying that the other aspects do not exist he accepts that there are other aspects but i examined those one aspect this is very important you know unless you accept that you try to uh, enter in controversy so naya is a point of view a vision and a way of thinking jain acharyas have described two separate areas for the thought uh, two kinds of naya system one is called the substantial point of view or what we call as dravyarthik naya is a technical term dravyarthik naya meaning it's a substantial point of view that means describe a thing with respect to its ultimate substance that is its uh, persistence or permanence you know so examine or describe a, a substance from the point of view its permanent nature and not the temporary modes for example you know i gave you one example last time you have a gold coin and somebody turns it into a necklace or another person turns it into an, a, a gold chain so basically they are gold the substantial point of view says that look here whatever the form it is gold the substantial point of view the description would be that it is gold whether it is a coin or a necklace or a chain and then there is a modal point of view call as a paryarthik nay you know you describe the substance from the mood point of view this means describe the thing with respect to its modification uh, so you are now uh, taking into account the change or the transformation which is taking place in the substance you know so the substance is changed from coin to necklace and chain and so so you make a different kind of description you say it's a coin this is a necklace this is a chain this is the modal point of view you describe it from the mode point of view so these two are very important ways uh, to describe the uh, particular stand point both points of views are relative you know whether it is a substantial point of view or uh, uh, the modal point of view they are, they are all relative you know nowhere is persistence completely independent of change and vice versa so we are not forgetting you know when we talk of modes we are not forgetting the substance point of view and we talk of substance point of view we are not for, forgetting the modes you know yet in order to get a holistic understanding of existence this arrangement was deemed fit so the substantial point of view analyzes persistence of oneness but does not completely rule out change you know as i told you as every view point has its own limitations it does not believe in polemics of the subject matter you know so although we describe the substance from one point of view we are not forgetting the other 
relativity means that there is nothing absolute and therefore there is nothing absolute you know you can have a different view points one may only analyzes a portion of the whole so naturally the remaining portion too remains allied to it we are not forgetting as i said this perception clarifies the theory of relativity this relativity is also expressed in this sentence if you want to know uh, make an expression in words as many viewpoints exist as many ways of thought so you can think or you can view the uh, substance from different viewpoints and therefore you can have different kind of description the basis of this argument is its mode modes are innumerable hence viewpoints too are innumerable you know you can if the thing has a different modes you can describe it in different manner only does the combination of innumerable parts enables us to realize the substance in totality so if you the substance is known in totality if you, all the modes are taken into consideration in in making a description well that is very difficult you can't do that and uh, we will we'll consider this problem uh, just now uh, we finish first the naya the naya is uh, classified also classified in another way which we call as nischay naya and vyavahar naya these two terms i will explain to you nischay naya is a transcendental view point you know so you describe the thing from the transcendental point of view it cognizes the real nature of the object and vyavahar naya is the relative point of view you no know, it's the relative naya and it cognizes the particular attribute distinguishing the ob- object you know so uh, for example you know uh, me uh, from the nischayana point of view i am a soul you know and from the vyavahar point of view i am an organism having a body so uh, when you talk of vyavahara uh, or the relative point of view we are cogn- we, we take cognizance of a particular attribute you know that distinguishes the object so i call my body but but the body is in you know, is is, uh, is changeable you know the soul can have many bodies uh, one body at a time uh, and so from the nischayana point of view from the transcendental point of view i am soul you know so i remain soul you know even if the bodies are different both nayas must be used to have a complete understanding you know so both points of view uh, must be considered for complete understanding of the substance example to understand soul as i told you from two point of view so nayavad is warning to philosophers no system is absolute and comprehensive it calls for reconciliation of conflicting views view points for harmony in the society you know for example the religions you know so in one of the lectures we talked about soul and uh, different religions have a different concepts of soul you know and therefore each religion say the look i am the best and i am superior i i know the soul in this manner but this is not correct no one has not to fight you know the soul can have different kind of perspective and so you have your own perspective i have mine and so on okay you you stick to your own point of view but there is no nischan there is no need to fight with each other you know because ultimately they represent the same reality now we come to uh, another third aspect of this uh, doctrine siyadvad uh the, the how do you describe the different modes at the same time you know uh so we have seen that uh, the structure of reality consists of both unity and diversity because substance is one and modes are many at the same time on the other hand human capacity for comprehension is uh, so limited that it cannot know a thing in its totality you cannot describe all the modes simultaneously so shyadvad emphasizes the fact that no predicate affirmed of a real 
is able to yield the whole truth about it it gives us only a partial view of the real so no predicate uh, of a real is able to yield the whole truth and therefore it is always a partial truth you know we are not able to uh, view the whole shyadvad affects the division or analysis of reality and na enlightens the particularity of the divided elements shyadvad is also known as a conditional dialectics and it says that the system or the logical system of exposition of the object of valid cognition possessed of infinite number of attributes by taking cognizance of a single attribute but without discarding the rest of the others you know so because we are not able to view the totality at a time so we do one by one and we describe one by one but when you are doing so it's important that we do not discard the other points of view or other descriptions this is very important you know and uh, based on this uh, uh, there is a science of satbhangi uh, uh, this is very interesting you know shyadvad is a method of exposition of the object and the satbhangi is its expression you know in how many ways you can express a substance uh, an object is recognized with respect to itself and with with respect to others as i said saptamhangi is based on the recognition that the number of statements one can make about an object is limited depending on the possibilities of positive and negative attributes as well as the possibility that the nature of the object might be inexpressible and combining these then can lead to there being only seven possible statements you know things like this a thing exists or does not exist in another form or it, we do not know in what form it exists and things like this so based on this approach you know what is being said here is there is only it's only possible to make seven different kinds of statements and not more than seven this has a mathematical significance and has a great scientific value so i am making seven seven different statements here it exists with there is some respect uh, take any object you know it exists in some respect so it's in a positive attribution positive statement it exists it does not exist in some respect some other respect it does not exist you know so it's a negative statement negative attribution so the first one is uh, uh, given the symbol plus and the second one the symbol minus it exists in some respect and does not exist in some respect this is also possible so both uh, you know you can have a positive attribu- attribution and a negative attribution fourth it cannot be expressed in some respect in expressibility it cannot be expressed the things will be clear when i take an example you know so and this is given the symbol zero or o it exists but it cannot be expressed in some respect so plus and o it does not exist but cannot be expressed in some respect and minus and o it exists in some respect does not exist in some respect and cannot be expressed in some respect then it has a plus minus and o these are the only seven kinds of statements or seven different uh, variations of statements you know which one can make about any particular thing or particular object we take an example to understand what i have said you know you take a cup 
example of a cup say for example and uh, let us say that the cup is uh, made of clay and so obviously you say that the the cup is not made of metal you know the cup could be made of clay and could be made of metal out of these possibilities what you have in your hand is a cup made of clay now we make different statements for this cup the cup exists in some respect its form no it exists in clay form so plus a positive statement the cup does not exist in respect of the other it's not a metal cup and therefore you say it's not a metal cup it's a negative statement the cup exists in respect of its form and does not exist in respect of the other so the cup exists as a clay cup and does not exist as a metal cup so you are making both statements plus and minus the existence of cup cannot be expressed in one attempt for it exists as well as does not exist now if you had to make only one statement you cannot say that it is a clay cup and not a metal cup because you have to make two different statements so uh, this is in a in one statement this is in inexpressible you can't express it that way and uh, therefore this statement is o it exists as cup and cannot be expressed in other respect you know so it exists as a clay cup and cannot be expressed if you want to make one statement then it is a plus and o and sixth it does not exist in some respect and cannot be expressed in another respect you know so it does not it does not exist as a metal cup therefore negative statement and o and the seventh is it exists as cup does not there is a clay cup does not exist as a metal cup or other form or cannot be expressed we want to make only one statement then this kind of uh, statement could be plus minus and o so very interesting uh, uh, analogy here and uh, the very interesting application of syadvad in in the form of saptabhangi we talk uh, something about the valid organ of knowledge or praman what is a valid organ of knowledge praman means you know is authentic knowledge so the praman and the naya type of uh, knowledge are mutually distinguished for the total and partial approaches of a real you know so in the particular point of view you have ex- describe only one aspect or one attribute and but that is not the authentic because it could have other attributes and other there are other attributes which are not described so praman takes into account the totality so the praman takes the whole as a real of its subject matter you know so the the the, the, the what we want to say is the total substance or the whole of it the total comprehension of reality is the knowledge you say authentic knowledge and is a praman type of knowledge this may appear to lead to impossibility of a praman type of knowledge our experience testifies to the fact that we are never able to comprehend the totality of reality this is our limitations because of our senses and therefore we don't comprehend the reality the totality and that for that means you know one has to say that okay i do not know i do not have the authentic knowledge because i cannot comprehend the totality what is the way out so the perfect knowledge you know who can comprehend the t- totality or the whole of the substance is known as a keval gyan in uh, jain philosophy you know keval gyan is a state of the soul where uh, it knows the object without senses transcending the senses you know the soul knows the object you know because now the senses are not involved in this kind of cognition uh he the soul can comprehend the totality or the reality so this state is reached as keval gyan and we will discuss about it in later lectures so keval gyan then you know is the only possibility that you know it has the pramana type of knowledge it has the comprehensive knowledge <coughs> a 
and in the lower stages like us you know when we are using our senses uh, we cannot experience the totality and therefore we do not have the authentic knowledge but in the jena works along with the keval gyan sensuous knowledge uh, or the scriptural knowledge like clairvoyance, clairvoyance uh, and telepathy have been enumerated as yielding pramana type of knowledge you know because if you take this view that only keval gyan knows the totality then we are forced to believe that of course we do not know the totality but this is very difficult to accept you know because one can say that, okay i am <coughs> seeing with my own eyes and this is the reality so jainism has accepted this view also <coughs> as a valid organ of knowledge in a limited manner you know so uh, the uh, there is a direct perception uh, or the perceptual cognition of pratyaksha this is of two types sensual perception the perception made through senses directly through instruments <coughs> and non sensual perception so non sensual perception uh, is again of three types and we will discuss these aspects later on Uh, the perception through clairvoyance perception through telepathy direct perception through omniscience so on this aspect uh, we will consider later on then there are indirect perceptions you know this is of three types uh, uh, which is uh, inductive reasoning or logic or inference anuman uh, so we try to uh, have a as some kind of inference you know in order that we re, uh, we grasp the reality the existence uh, of a substance or a thing is decided on the basis of existence or absence of another thing you know possibility so this is also considered as uh, a valid organ of knowledge what is implied here by looking at one thing uh, you try to guess at the other thing for example you look at smoke and if you look at smoke uh, you guess that there must be fire you know although you have not seen fire so this is uh, the kind of inference this is known as inference you know so many of the scientific observations uh, which are affect of a phenomena fall in this category so many of the scientific observations uh, uh, our inferences you know we draw inferences in many cases then analogy a comparison and the scriptures written records of the teaching of the omniscient they also are indirect uh, way of knowing things you know uh, so i stop here so what we have done today is to the study of uh, multiple the philosophy of multiple aspects saying that you know uh, any the reality has a multiple aspects and it uh, can be described on only of uh, all the aspects are taken into account and then we said that this is not possible so we come to the particular point of view naivad then we come to the point that how do you describe this then we come to siyadvad saptabangi and then we have discussed what is the valid organ of knowledge you know what is pramana so two types you know one is omniscience of course the perfect knowledge and the imperfect knowledge also is taken as a valid organ of knowledge uh, with uh, certain riders you know so on. thank you